we will have Nif. She comes from Ireland and she will uh, tell us about the indoctrination in uh, uh, TQ groups. So, um, because she is uh, talking about being a lesbian, she did she that uh, persuaded she before that she was queer, and that happened at the major TQ NGO in Ireland. So she's going to tell us about her experience. I am a twenty-four-year-old lesbian from Dublin, and I attended a group called Belong to which is a charity set up in 2003 um, based in Dublin and they have various groups throughout the day uh, throughout the week with different members of the LGBTQ umbrella um, for each one they have the under 18s the over 18s um, individuality and ladybirds ladybirds is set up to be for LBT girls and non-binary pals. Um, so it's not female only and it's not oh it's not under and over 18, it's not split. And I don't believe that individuality is, and that means that there's 14 year olds mixing with 23 year olds talking about sexuality and gender identity, which is worrying. Um, but at the time when I was attending, I didn't see it as an issue as such um, because it just seemed so normal. So when when I attended Belong To, the, the group that I went to was the Sunday group, which is now disbanded and broken into the under 18s and over 18s um, due to an incident that allegedly occurred and they had to separate the groups. But it was 14 to 23 year olds at the time. So I was 17 when I attended. Um, and that meant that I was mixing with 14 year olds and also 23 year olds and sometimes older than that. The groups are broken into leaders who are volunteer workers. Um, they, they kind of coordinate the group. When you first go in, there's like a 45 minute mingling session um where you get to talk to your peers hang out tea coffee and then it starts with the leaders sitting everyone down and going through the group one by one you have to say your name your pronouns your sexuality and a fact about yourself and the first time I attended I had been told by my friend who brought me that it was a get sort of gay club where I could meet other lesbian or bisexual girls my age um every there was about 15 people ahead of me going through their pronouns and sexuality and announcing it to the group every single one of them ahead of me was trans identified or non-binary and I was immediately uncomfortable even though I wasn't really sure how I how I felt about the trans thing I was new to it and uh, but it was just very intense that the pronoun thing and I felt so embarrassed to just say oh I'm a girl I'm I'm just a girl I'm just a lesbian and then the, after that then the conversation is a certain topic each week and the topics were troubling now in hindsight very troubling for adults to be discussing with children I'm going to focus on belong to just because that's what I have experience in but I'm going to break it down into the steps of mind control that are used in cults um just because that's how it feels for me personally that the behavior was and there's similarities you can see um so the steps I'll go through and kind of compare them with what happened and belong to. So the steps of mind control are identify the potential recruit, persuade the recruit to walk into the web. Love bombing is a huge part of it. Selling the idea and tough love, which is kind of the separating them from their network, um, which was a big part of belong to. Renouncing loved ones, introduction to the core beliefs and zero tolerance for criticism.
identifying the new recruits obviously it's lgbtq teenagers from 14 onwards belong to does go into schools in dublin um to give talks and to teach <laughs> teach the staff how to be inclusive um but just how cults do this that there's a failure to find a profile of a cult victim um just one second. despite many scholars looking for such however prominent scholar margaret singer found that people in a normal life blip such as a normal transition or in the case of belong to teenagers figuring themselves out make questioning their sexuality identity maybe uncomfortable with their bodies um and they they're the more at risk people to be captured by ideologies in the case of belong to when when i attended obviously i can't speak to before and after but the majority i'm going to say about 80 percent of the people i could notice had very obvious eating disorders or were self-harming and i could recognize that myself because i was experiencing that as well i was receiving help thankfully from my parents supported me and brought me to therapists and but the, the the other people that were attending belong to specifically the ones that were identifying as trans were not receiving help outside of belong to the only help that they were getting talking about their mental health was talking about their gender identity in belong to they were not going to therapy outside of that um belong to does have a huge following on social media across including on tiktok where they have 2308 followers so it's reaching a young demographic um including i believe 11 year olds are following um in 2021 a huge thing that they did which casted out a net to more children was the pledge packs that were sent out to schools that were asking secondary school children to pledge that they would normalize the use of pronouns amongst other things and that was backed by and collaborated with belong to um which in my opinion is very concerning um to have children pledging allegiance to any sort of ideology and the parents were not going to be informed someone caught wind of it i believe the, the group the countess did write a piece about it and alerted parents to it but it was going to be done without the parents consent or knowledge um lots of schools had to back out of it then when parents did complain because they found out that their children were going to be asked to use pronouns in school when i attended belong to it was as i said earlier it was presented to me by a friend as a gay club usually it was word of, word of mouth that people would find out about it um but in the sense of cults or ideological groups it comes across as an innocent self-help group or in the case of belong to a gay club a safe space for young LGB people or even children who are identifying as trans. Um, and then it then the indoctrination began when once you got in there and it happened very quickly. Um, the love bombing included the the leaders clapping and cheering when one time in particular there was a trans identified teenage boy who announced when we were going through the pronouns name fact about yourself that he was coming out as a lesbian and the leaders who were 25 plus were started to clap and asked all of us to clap with them and cheer and celebrate this male coming out as a lesbian which of course is is nonsense that a male can be a lesbian but that's what we were expected to do and if you didn't clap you were questioned why um the the coming out of 
as trans non-binary gender fluid that was a huge thing where you'd be massively celebrated you got all of the attention and consistently hearing the words um, that someone was brave or beautiful that they were coming out that was a huge part of the love bombing aspect successful indoctrination requires a cult to sell the idea of a happy environment a new recruit must be to convinced to come again and again until they become become part of the family. Um, so we were told, obviously, by the leaders that it was a safe space that belong to the doors are always open. Um, it was made out to be it is a youth group. So having activities and pizza parties is not a huge thing. But when it came then to the ideology, the trans ideology, it was basically all of the conversations surrounded that there was no conversations about lesbians or bi women and rarely mentions of gay men unless one of the leaders was a gay man himself it was there was um weekends arranged for trans teenagers to go away for a weekend somewhere down the country um for a weekend of this is an actual quote from them of team building and fun um and it was like two or three days so they were sleeping over and talking about I'm assuming binding and the other things that were discussed and belong to um that the tough love step is when it gets nastier the goal is to induce dependency um so we were told in the I believe it was the second session that I ever went to which I, I usually didn't stay until the end of sessions, but we were told in the second session that people might, people in the outside world might hate us, that because of our identity, because of our sexuality, that we, people, people in the outside world won't understand us, they might not agree with us, your parents, your friends might hate you, might not, not believe you, um, but that belong to is the safe space um for us and that we it was the only safe space that was a point that was driven home numerous times but that belong to is the only safe space that the outside world is going to hate you i have of course homophobia exists but in ireland i have never experienced hate because i'm a lesbian i experience hate because i am a woman i am um, shouted at on the street by men or it just general misogyny I've never experienced true homophobia in Dublin at least we are quite an accepting city and country so it's strange that belong to would be telling vulnerable teenagers very obviously vulnerable with eating disorders and other mental health issues that they were the only safe space and that the outside world their families and friends outside of belong to would not be there for them um would not accept them or we could even attack them in a phobic attack of some sort um so that they're at the same time the the carrot and the stick the reward and like showering with love and affirming gender identities was a huge part of that as well um and then, then the renouncing the loved ones was talking about distancing yourself from transphobes, both online, like blocking people, um, stopping talking to people in school who were quote unquote transphobes, which I was then called a transphobe when I said that lesbians are not attracted to trans women because they are not female. And lesbian is same sex attraction, not same gender attraction. I was called a transphobe for the first time when I was 17. And I was completely mortified because I knew lots of trans people at the time. And I couldn't believe that someone would call me that. So I was silenced because I understood what a lesbian was. This is a recent campaign that Belong To has done across social media, um, just showing the renouncing aspect of belong to the campaign is block the bad feed the good um that's but the bad is anyone who dissents from belong to or doesn't agree with everything they 
they say that trans women are, are women or that trans women can be lesbians, we were expected to accept trans women into lesbian spaces as lesbians into our potential dating pool and belong to. And if you weren't, you were shunned from the group by, by peers mostly, but it wasn't, um, you weren't told off. No one was told off by the leaders if they were shunning someone in the group. Um, so this is just an example. You can see that they're saying to um, block people on online. They're still doing that. And it's a whole campaign now on social media, which is quite a large campaign. It's all over Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. The core beliefs, the introduction of the core beliefs, I've mentioned a few of them previously with the not mentioning of lesbians, very little mention of gay men, unless the leader was a gay man himself. Usually there would be two or three leaders. Um, the only time that I saw being a lesbian celebrated was that time that the then trans identified male teenager came out as a lesbian and we were expected to clap and cheer for that. The, the adults that were in the same session, I believe, after we had done the introductions and that lesbian boy had come out as lesbian, the one of the leaders was a trans-identified female and had just received a confirmation from the doctor of a date for a double mastectomy or as belong to like to glamorize it top surgery and of course they never mentioned the risks involved or other options or anything like that and then we had to clap and cheer for that as well to celebrate this adult cutting off her healthy breasts and and we did that's that's the worst part about it. We all did. No one thought that that was an issue at that stage. We were all very excited for this, this person to, to do that, to get the top surgery and live their, live their authentic selves. That was a, a buzzword used a lot um, and that it was life-saving, life-affirming care for this person. So it was an amazing thing that this woman was getting a double mastectomy. Um, there was then on the other side, there was always kind of talk surrounding how a female bodied person could change themselves to look more masculine. Um, but very little talk of male to female, quote unquote, um, how they could present more feminine, um, but the, it was how young girls, and as I've mentioned, most of the, the teenage girls were going through eating disorders, very obvious self-harm, active self-harm, and they were being told how to bind their chest, how to, where to buy packers, how to, packers being prosthetic penises, to put in their underwear, to give themselves a bulge, to pass more as a man. Um, they, this, I do want to reiterate that they, they were telling 14 year old vulnerable girls this as well. They didn't, um, and it, all, all of the talk really was about the surgeries, how to, how to fund the surgeries, belong to on their website claims that they do not promote the use of chest binders, but I would question how is it not promoting when they're saying how to hide them from your parents. If you have quote unquote strict parents, how to hide your chest binder in the laundry without your parents finding out. Um, that was in my first session, they talked about that. They talked about how where you could buy it, but maybe send it to your friend's house, get it delivered to your friend's house so that you, your parents wouldn't see it arrive if they might open the post. Um, if you 
if your parents did the laundry for you, maybe wash it in the sink instead so they don't find out the, uh, so they say they don't promote it, but they, in the sessions, they definitely discuss how to hide it from your parents, how to hide other things from your parents, how to come out to your friends without your parents knowing. Um, and another huge part was that detransitioners were basically didn't exist, that no one detransitioned. That is not my experience whatsoever. I'm sure anyone who's on Twitter knows that there's a huge community of detransitioners speaking out now about the, the damaging effects of hormones and surgeries, but belong to never mentions detransitioners. You, you couldn't detransition anyone I know who desisted or detransitioned stopped going to belong to because it was they were no longer welcome to just be a a butch lesbian or a, an effeminate gay man that they weren't accepted the same way they were when they came out as gender fluid or transgender my one of my best friends is he's a gay man when he was going we went at the same time he was identifying as gender fluid and because he was effeminate and dressed a little bit flamboyantly and he was convinced then after attending belong to a few times that he was in fact not a man not a gay man that he was gender fluid he that lasted maybe two years for him and then he was embraced when he was gender fluid everyone spoke to him he was one of the most popular people and now he is he lost a lot of friends after coming out as a gay man and just realizing that no I'm, ju I'm just an effeminate gay man um and he's cur still currently losing followers getting blocked on online now because he's saying he's speaking out against trans ideology by people who we attended belong to with but he he experienced that and he was convinced that he was gender fluid because there was no way he could just be a, an effeminate gay man. He must be something else. Um, likewise, one of my other very good friends, she's a straight woman, but at the time, normal questioning what is going on in your life when you're a teenager. She attended actually with my gay friend just to go with him because he didn't know anyone else attending that day and after three times of her going as a straight woman was questioning if she was bisexual or not she also thought that she might be non-binary or gender fluid because she liked to wear Doc Martens and what didn't like wearing skirts that was what three three weeks she was then convinced that she was not a girl because she didn't dress dress in skirts and dresses and pink she preferred to wear doc martens and baggy t-shirts so that was the influence that i noticed and then of the other 14 people that i know from around that time who i was acquaintances with through belong to who were trans identified or non-binary gender fluid they there was 16 in total, including my two good friends. Only three of them continue to identify as trans. They are on hormones, I believe. Two of them definitely are, but that means that the other 13 desisted, making it 81.25% that desisted and belong to tells us that there is no desisters, there's no detransitioners, or they're a very tiny minority. 81 to 82% is not a tiny minority. This was the biggest part was I left after, so when I was called transphobic for the first time, it was online, it was just prior to me um, attending Belong To or around the time that I started to go to Belong To and 
the I I had just said something on Facebook. There was an interaction, and I just said lesbians are not attracted to trans women because they are not female. But I was still saying like, oh, a trans woman is a woman, but lesbians are not attracted to them because they are not female. The mental gymnastics of that, I can't really fully explain how that thought process went. I Again, I was 17 at the time, but then a trans identified male then told me in the comments that I was being transphobic, but wouldn't explain how I was told to educate myself, that it's not trans people's jobs to educate transphobes and then when I was in belong to and that trans identified male came out as a lesbian during the group and was celebrated I I didn't clap and I realized that that was uh, it belonged to was not a place for lesbians it wasn't a place for me because I was I didn't believe that this person could be a lesbian and that and obviously subsequently I've I've been blocked by friends. I most none of them, none of the people I know from Belong To talk to me except my two good friends who I knew from outside of Belong To. They will shun anyone who desist or dissents from what they say in the group. If you if you were to question it or say how can a lesbian be attracted to a biological male that is the opposite of what a lesbian is you were you were shunned by the peers it wasn't that the the adults again were doing the, the shunning themselves but they never they would never stop it there was also talk then during the mingling sessions that the adults the leaders would walk around and just you know make sure that everyone was okay that you know that they if they needed water or anything would have a quick chat with them but the the different cliques you'd hear them talking about fucking cis people or fucking heteros gross and that was that was heard by the leaders and not stopped that was not shut down it was not questioned it was just allowed to run rampant this narrative that cis het people were out to get us and hated us and that I have to listen to that I'm a I'm just a lesbian so I fell into the category of cis and then of course my straight female friend who was attending who for a period of time I believe she was um gender fluid she was having to hear that the the negative talk about straight heterosexual not trans identified people being talked about with such vitriol but she was being embraced massively when she was identifying out of her out of her sex that was and that's why then when you desisted you couldn't attend anymore because you were having to listen to people talk about cis people like that and so negatively and that they were evil and that they that they were disgusting with some of the things that were said and again the leaders never shut any of that down which is crazy um yeah so they it was that like zero tolerance for anyone questioning it, but then also allowing really negative talk about anyone outside. So it was an outsiders versus belong to mentality and it was allowed to happen by the leaders. They saw it happen and they just let this all happen and with without consequence. My, the same gay friend, <laughs> friend he had, completely separate from belong to on his personal Facebook account didn't mention anyone didn't tag anyone or direct anything at anyone in particular there was 
someone who was identifying as, I believe it was a rodent at the time, as a furry, who Miriam belonged to. And he just put up a, a Facebook post about how furries have nothing to do with being gay or lesbian. Why are they being grouped in with us? Like they have nothing to do with gay people. And he, someone who also attended Belong To, reported him to Belong To, which I don't know why they thought they had had the ability to tell him what to do outside of Belong To, but they forced him to write an apology letter to the, the person who believed they were a rat in the group. And then they banned him from the group, which if that doesn't speak volumes to how there was zero tolerance for any questioning. I don't know what else does. In their annual report, belong to is funded by the the department or supported by the Department of Children and Equality here in Ireland. They receive huge funding from the government. They also receive money through fundraising as any other charity would. They received just under a, a million euro through fundraising in 2021 um but their the annual report for 2020 yeah for 2020 did actually outline the funds received from government departments that is not clearly marked out in the 2021 annual report that i can see that they have the actual figure I know that there has been um, issues with the the funding and the management of funding from that particular department and who which particular organizations, NGOs are receiving funding. Um, but that that's how much money they made through fundraising. I know that they did get more from the government in 2021 and in 2022, a, a huge grant was given to them just to note there another part from their annual report there was a group there was eight percent of them were 11 to 14 year olds I'm not sure why belong to was surveying 11 to 14 year olds when the group is 14 to 23 um, but there was 11 year olds included in this survey but 34 percent said they identified as the sex that they that they are 35 percent said they they didn't that they identified as something else and then 31 percent didn't specify that's a, that's a huge number the fact that there's 35 percent there's one percent more from their survey that are saying that they do not identify as their biological sex of 11 to 22 year olds that they surveyed. That's a very stark number. But then, as I said, there was 16 teenagers that I knew who really truly believed and were looking into surgeries and hormones. And some of them had gotten on waiting lists for hormones. Only three of them remain identifying as transgender and have received hormones thankfully the others desisted rather than detransitioned they didn't make it to the to the to the state where they were taking hormones or anything thankfully but that is it's 82 percent or 81 percent that are but again belong to says that there's no detransitioners and that we have to support the these teenagers as trans and help them with getting getting their hormones or getting onto GP waiting lists for gender affirming care. Um, but that's that's kind of my last point there, just that the stark the starkness of how many people they've interviewed who don't believe they are their biological sex compared to then the 81% that desisted that I knew that belong to doesn't have a space for who are just gay or lesbian men who were gender non-conforming or even and in the case of my my best friend a straight woman who was just just attended as a 
as a friend with the gay the gay man she then believed she wasn't her own gender so I think maybe the people they're surveying are people who are actively attending belong to and could be caught up in all of that when I was attending I know that I did drink the Kool-Aid I was fighting with my family about it I was saying that my trans identified female partner from the time was my boyfriend and there was many an argument in this house over it now obviously I know that I'm actually just a lesbian and she was just uh, she has desisted thankfully and that but she just had short hair she was just a a bisexual she's a bisexual who had short hair at the time and I was calling her my boyfriend so that's that's how deep it was and it's taken a long time to realize how insane all of this is and I'm still having to what almost eight years later still unlearning things and language that was used and realizing that now a trans woman is cannot be a lesbian and a, a teenage girl should not be being told by adults how to find her breasts and how she could set up a GoFundMe or any of the other methods of quote unquote becoming a man and living her as her true authentic self as a, as a man they it's taken a long time to get myself out of that um thankfully I have and now I realize how damaging it is and that is why I speak up about it and speak up particularly about belong to and the dangers of it just because they are so heavily funded but that's that's my piece <laughs> are you aware of any policy documents in belong to that sets out a strategy to recruit people into the cult or do you think it's just that they really believe in their own philosophy Finally, do you know if their, if their funding is predicated on them pushing queer and trans ideology? So I don't know if they have a written document about the, the recruiting. I know the fact that they go into schools. They also are in being consulted in government departments. I know that they go and talk. They're basically get asked about every policy in government. Um, what their opinion would be the same with Tenny, Tenny is the Trans Equality Network Ireland. They are consulted in government departments heavily in the Department of Children and Equality and the Department of Education. I know that both groups are consulted. So I don't know if they necessarily have a policy of how they go about recruiting people. As I said, we I found out about it through word of mouth. I believe that's where most of my friends, at least, they just heard it from other friends or friends of friends that there was this quote unquote gay club that we could go to and meet other gay, lesbian and bi people. Um, obviously, that's not how it ended up being. Um, I don't know if the funding is that it's predicated on the, the trans ideology aspect. I do know that the the department that does fund them heavily does push for gender ideology um and he the minister that is the head of that department he does um choose tenny and belong to and other lgbt heavily the tq tq part of that group um he chooses them to fund more heavily than other groups such as the the traveler organizations or um there was a fund for Ma uh, magdalene laundry redress scheme and they were money was taken away from their budget and given to belong to and tenny that is what i do know i don't know if they it's a requirement to be tq heavy but that's i do know that funding was taken from a budget for other minority groups or redress schemes and given to the LGBTQ groups. 
the second question is uh, within sociological studies of cults near religious uh, movements, we see all the time that the animosity between insiders, the members, and outsiders, which are the family and friends, make it harder for members to leave the group should they want to. How can we criticize and still not feed the isolation on youth and children in the trans community? From my experience, I'm, I'm not really sure how to go about criticizing without isolating say your your child your young your young daughter or someone who's attending belong to I don't know how you could get them out without them feeling isolated because it's so ingrained in you that because you're told by belong to that people are not going they, the outside world is not going to agree with you they're going to to hate you they're transphobic homophobic any other phobic that I involves gender identity um like as I said I was I was fighting with my mom a lot I just stopped going because of the lesbian man coming out and I knew that it wasn't a place for me I'm not sure how you would criticize without making your child like without affirming that rhetoric for your for a child to say like that you could criticize belong to or the ideologies without them turning around and saying oh this is what belong to told me this is what belong to told me you would do that you wouldn't agree with me that you that you're transphobic that you hate trans people um that's something that i think that we can all try and figure out together i think that's something we have to figure out is how to criticize the cult without pushing away our loved ones further into the cult but I'm stumped I'm still trying to like unlearn cult behavior mm -hmm. so I don't know how you'd go about it unfortunately. <laughs>